This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Big J Moore. You're so out. tan, Petey. Hey, it's summertime, man. I don't do lotion. I'm Italian. You don't even have to. I don't do sunblock. Do you do sunblock? Uh, not really. No, no. Put a little of them here. Oh, yeah. You look good, man. It's good to have you here. You Have you and Sebastian, like, he said have maybe once met? in Dallas he thinks he in met. In passing, Addison, Texas, 005, maybe. Jeez. You were doing a... Uh, uh, a radio show you were promoting your show and i was waiting outside i think we passed each other but there was no like hey nice to meet you it was like i'm gonna need you to bring the energy up hello. yeah it's yeah, about he's, as he's, excited uh, uh, as i get no. um but, <laughs> but like you don't play the store you never play the store regularly where you guys ran into each other i never got passed and every time i put it yeah, i go right, to put in a vet yeah what because I, I was always the laugh factory or the improv and then like about a year ago i went to put in a veils and they're like well did mitzi pass you i'm like mitzi's mitzi's pretty cold like Bro. mitzi's mitzi's been dead a while like no right. and she didn't ever pass me but i always did shows there for like, like when louis anderson did sundays and you're not just a bop in what the f- that's I've never right. been. I've never been a bop in guy anyway. Oh I, my god! I'm old and I got some. I got some credits behind me. I like just laying in bed watching TCM. That's my happiness now. I just watch the old movies. <laughs> yeah, like coming here. I was, the Turner I, China classic movies. Uh, yeah, no, I know. What that okay, is. because early, why, did, why did you have to say that? Because like, I didn't know what it was. The, the other one, where Billy was saying movies, and you go, I don't know the movies. He was yeah, why did you oh, talk right. to Sebastian like he's elderly? <laughs> <laughs> Turn your classic movies, well, bro, Pop. I gotta be honest. You came in with white socks on, like you just finished mowing your lawn on Long <laughs> Island. So this whole, I feel like I'm in a time warp right now. <laughs> what, what, what color are your socks? Uh, the un- unseen guy, unseen. Uh, That's I, what they are. A visual. Yeah. Okay. Visible I mean, you're white, with white socks. socks. Telling me that you didn't get passed at a comedy club. I'm like, what the fuck time warp am I in right now? You're a bopping guy. I mean, how many movies are we talking over? Twenty? Thirty? Jesus. But you know, there's. Not all winners. You could tell, like, yeah, but dirty. I mean, you could tell, Jerry like, why is one of them right there? But what? That was the first one. I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, so I want to. I want to get into this, right? Yeah. I, did, I did a deep dive into gasping for airtime, right? Thanks. And I know that that's Jay Moore's book, ladies that's and that's gentlemen. His book, by yeah. The way, right? <laughs> Yeah, Which I do- can write. <laughs> yeah, pen to paper. <laughs> do the work. Did you? Did you? <laughs> did you read it too? Though, like, uh, nah. So, so who's doing the audio? No, 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 no I, I did it. it. Was, I, did. I thought you meant do I, did oh, I actually read my oh, own book? No, yeah, no, no. He, he he did the audio. Oh. I'm in the audio version of the book, and it talks about your your time on Saturday Night Live. And I know in the book you say people always ask you about Saturday Night Live. It's it's and, and I'm fascinated with it too. I've never done the show, and it. It seems like it's disorganized, and yeah. I'm trying to figure out when you were there. It just seemed like uh, you didn't know when to show up. They're, 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 they're telling you, you know, we're paying you for uh, to be here, right? And was it as chaotic as you describe in the book? Because I get anxiety thinking about the process there. Yeah, it's it's pretty disorganized, but... Once I was out, like now looking back, I'm like, oh, I could totally do it. Like I get it. Like there's a there's an order to the chaos, and I would I would ask like, what time should I come in tomorrow? And they'd go, hey, you're paid to be here, man. Is there no is there no hours? No. So I'd get there at noon, and like the next guy would show up at five. Yeah. And I was like, oh, and it'd be Rob Schneider, be like, what are you fucking doing here, rookie? <laughs> what are you fucking doing here, rookie? <laughs> Uh, but there was yeah. our, like, the the table read on Wednesday, you know, it was, like, afternoon. It was very, like, island time. Like, hey, bruh, hey. Like, you know, Lauren's on a call. You know, he's on the phone with, like, fucking Dick Cheney. You're not going to break it up. But now that I remember, though, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that that's, like, this. I've known Jay, like, from when I started doing stand-up. You were, like, already a star. And now that I'm thinking, that was, like, the second thing already. Because didn't you do a sitcom before that? Like, a Save by the Bell sort of a thing? Like, you were famous, like, <laughs> yeah, I was, a I was, year I was, in, you were already acting and shit, I was, right? I was screech. The, uh, no, but there was yeah, some I sort did of acting a, work. Like, I, I did uh, Camp Wilder. It was Camp on, Wilder! It, 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 nobody knows. Bell, Camp Wilder, guys. I know, like, right? Alligators, so, crocodiles. Yeah, you you're know? right. But you know who yeah. else was on that show? It was two-time Academy Award winner, Hillary Swank. Oh wow! Oh shit! Uh, Jerry O'Connell, our boy. 
Damn, yeah. man. So, uh, yeah, we, it was a weird little... Yeah, so I did that in, like, 1990. I had my 20th birthday on the ABC. And when did you start doing stand-up? 16. What year, though, was that? Oh, 87. Three years later, you're doing a, a sitcom. Are you like, this is so easy? You know, I've never done that math in my life. When you put three it like years. that, it's, like, it's pretty fast. Oh, three years. I've never done that math. I was, like, hoping to get a Saturday night spot at the Comedy Cellar after three years in. Well, you were saying... He's doing that he... swings. <laughs> that, that he has a uh, an undeniable confidence about himself. Thank you. That you yes. that you typically never see. Yes. Uh, you, you, you run across it. You, you mentioned him and somebody else that had this type of yes. confidence. I, Who's I, the other guy? <clears throat> not a guy. It, it's uh, Amy um, Schumer. Thank you very much. But it's like <laughs> I was going to say, Amy Schumer and you. You're the only like it's this thing. I try to tell other comics who talk about. It, I go. Jay Moore had this thing, and Amy Schumer had it, where it's like. Even before they were great, they were like, I'm great. It's like such a matter of fact that I'm going to be famous. May as well get to it right away. And it was so, it was just like this undeniable confidence. And like, the, so I know so many stories about you. Remember the one movie that you were playing where you're dying of AIDS in a hospital bed? Oh, the comedy. No, it wasn't, was it? <laughs> no. Yeah, it was Roses or something, right? Wasn't that one was called? Uh, with John Stewart was not that one. Speaking of sex, it was it was originally called Dancing About Architecture, and then they changed it to I think. Um, speaking of sex, I'm not sure. Like Angelina Jolie and Ryan Philippe, and like, um, yeah, all right, Sean Connery, and some of these stories Crazy. I can't remember from hanging out. If you had told me, or if our mutual friend Dina Cola, uh, who I heard was mentioned in the book, shared with me, but like. Your last one, one of your auditions for that, you're dying of AIDS, and, you pl and the audition scene, you're in a hospital bed. So you're at yeah. the woman's house, and you're asked to do it. was at the director's it. house, Willard Carroll, and his house. It was, like, up around this neighborhood, and uh, he had, like, a guest house, and he had the auditions in his guest house. So I was literally just sitting next to a bed in the guest house, and they were all set up, and I just started reading, and I was like, can I? Because my scenes are in the bed. Right. So I was like, I had some balls on me though. Oh, so like you but got under like, the covers? Do you I, take I, your I, shoes off? What? I took everything off except my boxers. Oh, oh my no, God. no, that's fucking confidence. Dude, I don't even know no, if I give you the part no. halfway through taking your clothes off or if I kick you out. <laughs> well, I mean, what, I'm, I'm, slow, like, I'm supposed to be playing a guy dying of AIDS in a hospital. Playing so guy, playing. <laughs> well, you start working. I'm supposed not to be sitting my... up. That that that's the confidence level. That's of what I'm saying. That's that's to me, it's not confidence; it's logic. Logic. Yeah. And we're how all talking not... like we're, we're all talking like we're arguing. Dude, I can't yeah. believe you have. Don't you understand? East Coast. East He's Coast. He's got to clean the sheets now. This... What am I oozing sores? Is, I don't know what you got going it's, on. I'm playing AIDS. I don't have it. <laughs> You're playing it so well. I got to burn the sheets. I don't want to get. I don't want to get it. Can't yeah. get AIDS again. But isn't there a part of you though in that, like we talk about like not being completely in the scene? Like that's what I don't act at all, but like to be in in the bed now and I'm doing the scene. Like you forget a line, are you like, oh my god, and I'm in his bed. I could I could have just forgot the scene in the chair. Like you know what I'm saying? Uh, like you're adding so much pressure on yourself. I've always ad libbed pretty well. Like if I didn't if I didn't know the exact lines, I would just say a line like in the ballpark and right. just to keep it moving. Because you always felt like you belong there. You you that's the confidence. Like you felt like I I should be doing this part. So let's just put me in the bed now and see what you're gonna get because you're gonna get it. It's like <laughs> fucking crazy. I'd be getting in the bed going, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I hope you. So, <laughs> so I mean, you seem to be doing it right for yourself. What? Well, listen, I'm just I'm enjoying this. But that it's confidence, like, going back to what you were saying, like that's when I look back, I'm 52. When I look back at my life, very divisive. You walk in a room confident, you make enemies without even yeah. opening your mouth. Even you, you don't have to shit on anybody or cross anybody. And then when you have success with that confidence, you you make enemies that you don't even know. There's there's still guys that I won't name that are just like, every time I see them, they're like, mm. and it's like, eh, I don't know. Right. Fucking just wanted to go fulfill my dreams, sorry. Right. Right. But that confidence also was like, um, I, 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 like it's like a, being a child. Like, I want that. Yes. Like mine. Yeah, that, and that's what I got from it, you know? I'm, yeah, yeah. I mean, but also if it was real confidence, I wouldn't need validation all the time. So it's, it's like a deep rooted fear of not being accepted, not being like, not being a member of a group. Yeah. That, well, that's because if I really had that confidence, I wouldn't need the constant validation that we all need as comics. But don't you see it more like 
LeBron's going to try to win the championship every year because he's competitive and that's what he's supposed to do. You're supposed to be, if you're doing comedy, you're funny every time, all the time. So, so it's not trying to, oh, I'm hiding this lack of confidence. It's doing the job. Always be funny. Always try to be the best at it. Isn't it just competitiveness? Like, how do you, like, that's how I see it. Even well, like I was... Sebastian's like, it's hard to cut you off, but to get him You're going to make it one day, Sebastian. Yes. Hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Well, like, Don't you love when a comic just gets loose? Dude, we went to the olive tree You're yesterday. You're like, holy shit. And he's saying, the, ol the olive oh, tree. Oh, in the back, you got to see the olive trees. And he's going, you know, the fear of not being able to sell out at the level that you once did. As opposed to, I'm saying, whether you do or you don't, you were at, like, you know, you were, you did something at some level, like, um, so. Now I'm back in the bars. <laughs> well, like, wait, I, yeah. What do you mean? Just doing clubs. What? Yeah. So what? I never hit like a, a theater level or any, I just kind of chug along at this level. But I got this freedom, like, well, you stress about, you must stress about tickets. Well, I, you play some big ass rooms. Well, it's just like you stress out about, it could be at any level. I mean, yeah. it, could, yeah. it could be a movie that you hope that comes out and sells tickets. I mean, there's a business aspect to, you know, entertainment that you hope that you, you know, just are consistent you know so that's what i was talking talking to pete about i'm like you know you don't want to like you want to leave like with like barry sanders almost where you know you we talk about billy joel like that time billy joel doesn't sell the madison square guard he don't want to ever do it again you know he never wants to feel the dip you got to talk to pete but how pete likes to talk so when you're in the billy joel you're in his wheelhouse yeah, oh no, yeah you talk about, you talk about joel. Yeah, yeah like the himself. inside is on billy <laughs> bender and eddie was still going steady oh, yeah. in the summer of well, yeah, he's, listen, he's from jersey so he's a bruce guy you know at the i just okay. busted out uh, scenes from italian restaurant I know, I was I was good. come on good. 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 i feel like and then decided the marriage would be at the end of july all right the screen door Slam Mary's dress waist. Yeah, right, I'm giving credit and you're mocking. I'm not. I'm doing a little back of this. It's a Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, no, it's a whole thing. It's like a right. foreign language <laughs> over here, right? <laughs> Sorry. He was oh, my go. Ray. There we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> you're just too marvelous, no. marvelous for words. <laughs> no. But you know, I love that Yogi Berra quote if people don't want to come, we can't stop them. <laughs> so yeah, when, I, yeah. when I heard that quote or read that quote for the first time, it, I really kind of worked it in because I used to go nuts about tickets, mm -hmm. especially when I was doing theaters. I'd be like, fuck, I hope I fill this place. Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, bro, you do the radio, you do everything you can do. And if they don't want to come, you can't. You can't. Play. Yeah, it's it's like, it. you know, yeah. but like if we if we slip through the cracks, we still have a pretty good life. Yeah, absolutely. Like I was in rehab two years ago if you look at my imdb page i go from like movies with forrest whitaker and keanu reeves to like there's a gap yeah and then there's like talking dog movies uh, you know <laughs> and I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not even like i'm not even the lead dog <laughs> i'm a salesman at chewy vuitton or i work at bark williams or something <laughs> You know what I mean? But yeah, that's but still I mean, like some, some that's still, still like, kill for. That's I, still yeah, no, that's I'm still saying. like nine grand for yeah. a Saturday in a studio. Yeah. Going, do you sure you don't want to try it on? You uh, look great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's still like no, who's making nine grand on a Saturday to fucking talk like a chewy baton rep? <laughs> Putting it in perspective, right? Bro, I like love it. like we right. we do well when we're right. like at the lowest. Like I I was right, in a rehab right. like weeks after that. Look, guys, there's no quick fix for an anxiety and depression. It's not, it's not finding a new therapist or starting an exercise routine, uh, not more in regular meditation or a better diet. Sometimes you need something to unlock your brain, you know? Sometimes you need something else, a new way of thinking about and seeing the world. And maybe that is guided ketamine therapy from MindBloom. But there's a new tool to improve your mental health at home ketamine therapy. Mindbloom is the leader in at home ketamine therapy, having safely helped thousands of people overcome their anxiety and their depression. Okay, so unlike traditional talk therapy, ketamine works quickly and doesn't have the unpleasant side effects of traditional antidepressants. In a study of over 1,200 Mindbloom clients, 89% reported improvements in their anxiety and depression after only two sessions. 89%. Mind blown from Mind Bloom, baby. Right now, Mind Bloom is offering our listeners one hundred dollars off your first six session program when you sign up at mindbloom.com slash the cast and use the promo code the cast. Take your first step and break free from your anxiety and your depression with Mind Bloom. Eighty nine percent people will help by it, so it can help you too. Go to mindbloom.com slash the cast 
and use promo code to cast. Now, what you take on then, like, uh, if someone came to you with some sort of a, like, you know, Eric Roberts does the uh, elderly tub for the old people, like, <laughs> you know. I know. Yeah. I never saw that commercial. Yeah. You know the guy, you know when they do ones like the guy who played for the Cubs, the big guy, uh, the first baseman. Andre Ron Dawson. Santos no, his fucking one leg. No, the, the, the black first Andre baseman, Dawson. Phillips. Oh, the uh, black one. I, Are you hearing me? Hey, do you hear me? No, I not said, Andre Dawson. <laughs> well, then you could say it. Oh, I'm That's sorry. That's not the guy. I can't oh, believe... I'm sorry. I thought you, I thought not you go, no, 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 like that. No, 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 no. Oh, what's you the said commercial? Your head. It's a pill. Uh, gosh, what's his name? But Ron he had... Say? No, no, no. Frank the... Thomas. Yes. That's White Sox. Yeah. Like I, I, I I, in my Chicago mind, I'm like, though. there's no sorry. way Pete yeah. has the right team. Oh, but he says... <laughs> Hi, I'm Frank Thomas. It's t- funny t- to me when you got to, like, you pay less for the guy that has to say who he is at the beginning, like, to remind you. I'm, I'm Frank Thomas. I used to play first base for the White Sox. Yeah. Whereas, you know, like, you know, I, are you, you think you're at, I think you're at the level where you don't have to say, hi, I'm Jay Moore from Ba Ba Ba. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think you have a, I think you're living in 95 or something like <laughs> Bro, I'm, I, I can't get in at the comedy store. You think I can sell squatty potties on TV without saying my name? Like, like oh, there's Jay Moore. What's he selling? Like, what am I like? Even Betty White said, I'm Betty White for pet. I'm Wilfred Brimley. I want to talk to you about diabetes. <laughs> All right, man. But so, listen, like, I've what? always, I've always admired the things no, you've done. Was, I've elderly always, tubs? You know. where, are gonna, where are we going what? with this? What? Eric Roberts. I, I'm, yeah, I'm just saying. Would you would you do something like that when you got older? Because you're saying I'm just do it now. <laughs> <laughs> Elderly tubs. I'd be in it. <laughs> Watching TCM. <laughs> That's Turner Classic. Yeah, right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> no, I don't. You know, I uh, I don't have to worry about money, so I don't really uh, worry about money. Right. So there's not many yeah. things I would do for the yeah. money. Yeah. You oh. just said you were like the third dog for nine grand. Yeah, but I, you know. Uh, uh, just for the fun of it, you're saying. Yeah. I yeah. mean, well, no, like we're obsessed with working. Like we always feel like we got to work. It's yeah. always like, what's next? What's next? What's next? And then, like, we want to stay in show business. We have this fear of like being on the outside looking in. Yeah. You know, it's like if I'm doing TV, it's like, how come I'm not doing movies? If he's, do- he's doing fucking big arenas and he's like, how come I'm not doing TV? And this guy's doing movies. Like, I wish I could do stand up. Yeah. Like we're all like, yeah, we're, we're all always... fucking broken toys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I live in a small town. How'd you get your name first on this, by the way? Uh, only cause you kind of throw it away. I, I, that was my pitch. I go, dude, let me go first. If you come first, they're not even going to get to me. You know? <laughs> so you let me go. Pete Sebastian. Pete Sebastian. If, if, yeah. if he went, if he went first, your name would be in, in parentheses. Uh, yeah, definitely. And by at this point, for Sebastian. sure. And Pete. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And Pete. Dude, exactly. So you get it out of the way and then you can do a nice long Sebastian. Sebastian. That's the, that's, e, the guess it that. each. that's the sell on that. But no, I, I don't do like, I, I'm turning down like, there's just certain cities I don't want to play anymore. I'm like, Ugh, yeah, I can't. <laughs> the connecting flight, it's fucking cold. Like, so I'm just, right. I just want to love life now. I love my life. I just want to keep loving my life. There's like a di- uh, a club I play in Long Island just because um, I still play because I love the egg sandwich at the deli <laughs> that you can walk to from the Marriott. And when I play it, I think about that every year. I'm like, I can't. Because I live in upstate New York. That's man. the most it's, Pete Corielli thing I've well, had. There's a club I play because I love the egg sandwich. So, so no, it could be that simple. They're like, why don't you still come to our little club? Because I can get a bacon, egg, and cheese at the Greek deli down the block. Yeah. That's to die for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Like, do you ever play a town where, like, you literally looking forward to because of a restaurant in that city? Yeah. Uh, yeah. A restaurant or uh, maybe a hotel. Never right. an egg sandwich, right. though. I never but but that, something that. other than the people. <laughs> All right? <laughs> you, you, you come in, good to be in da-da-da. And they think for them, and you're like, no, because of the lobby where I stay. is so nice. I love getting a brandy there oh. at the end of the night. Whatever. Yeah. There's, like, there's a club in Florida I didn't really want to play because it's a restaurant, but the guy would take me fishing. We'd, we'd like sneak on the golf courses and bass fish. A little place called Captain. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So I'm like, yeah, you know no, what? I just want to fish. Uh, I've done it too. I remember once we were casting, it was about to rain. We're casting out. There's like a gator like eight feet from the guy. I'm like, we should go. He goes, no, no, it's all right. Right before the rain is the best time. They really start biting because of the barometric pressure. I'm like, this fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's right. like a fucking gator. Like, they always got that fucking look. Like, 
<laughs> they're always looking like they're going yeah. ah, chia, 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 chia. now I, I got a great segue here speaking of things you've done and seen when you did jerry Maguire, yeah. i have to ask because he's like a national treasure he's like the eighth wonder of the world this guy have you spent time with no. tommy c fishing anything like, well, even during, a sandwich during, during filming the, the you... old person tub we'd get in the <laughs> tub for the elderly we'd share right right That's uh no but he's he's tom's like Cruz is like the coolest man I've ever met in my life. He's he's an absolute man's man. Really? Like he's just and he's he's here. Yeah, what is the the, the listening is pretty intense. It, yeah, it's it's like when I when I most of the times I did the Tonight show, they'd put me on second after a politician cuz they didn't know if the politician was going to be good or not. So they'd always call me to be like the hammer next. Mm. And when you talk to like politicians whether like john mccain mitt romney hillary clinton george they're fucking they're they're just we need one vote right here like and that's how he was but without needing your vote yeah like he, yeah we did we were on the set of um of of the movie and i'm sorry yeah that's what we're talking about and uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> we were on the set and uh my dad goes my dad raced cars with tom cruise in the northeast like watkins Glen, bridgehampton and these little spec racers like scca club racing and what, what do you mean when when he was like, little and tom 90, was little? 91 92 93 94 like before days of thunder i guess and my dad goes ask your buddy tom cruise what what gear he's in in turn two he's the only guy that never crashed at watkins Glen at turn two and i'm like all right so like we're on set and like there's a break and I'm like, hey, uh, you know, you race with my dad and he wants to know uh, at Watkins Glen, what gear were you in? Because you never crashed at turn two. It's fucking Tom Cruise like, <laughs> like that fucking wattage. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, he's looking at me. And he goes, I think I was, I think I was in second gear. And I'm like, oh, okay. So then I tell my dad on the phone, like at lunch. Uh, Two months go by, we're at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, and I'm on the 40-yard line, and I'm just throwing a football, killing time. It's like 2 in the morning. Tom Cruise comes running out of the tunnel. He's like, Jay! And he comes running towards me. He's like, JJ! And he's just sprinting. Fucking Tom Cruise is sprinting at me. And I'm like, hey! And he goes, what, uh, what gear was your dad in? Oh. <laughs> Two months. Oh, like, he didn't want to, like, he thought. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> like, you remember that? Yeah. Like, you remember that? Yeah. He's the best. Damn. Oh, well. And when we were doing the firing scene, when I auditioned, the whole thing with Bob Sugar was like, he's always looking down at you. Even if even if I'm shorter than you, it's like, there's a, it, mentally in my head, there was always like a diagonal line looking down at you. So I'd always like, okay, Pete, you know? But when we did the, when we actually filmed it in the restaurant, I had like a really low chair at the table. So I was like, I felt like a little kid. I'm like, I came here to fire you. And then we did like three takes and he goes, how'd you like it? And I'm like, my chair's too small. And he goes, Cameron, he needs a higher chair. <laughs> <laughs> so they take my chair, they put like apple boxes under it. And I'm like, <laughs> then like in the movie, I'm like, uh, like up here, like yeah. I came here, you know, I came here to fire you. Cameron. Yeah. It's like he's the best. Yeah, man. He's the best and an underrated actor, man. That's amazing. But again, the confidence I'm talking about. If Tom Cruise goes, "You like it?" I'd be like, "Did you like it?" You know, <laughs> you're going. I need a higher chair. I'd be like, "You know, Tom Cruise, that just you need furniture guy." That's crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> you, you know, right? You know what I'm saying? No, it's it's uh, it, yeah, man. Is I, that confidence I'm... or like it, it? It's it's a mortal terror of failing. So I'm gonna just, that's my fucking parachute before I get fucking washed out to sea. Yeah. And I'm out of the business forever. Like, oh, I need a bigger chair. Yeah, no. And it, plus, like, if I get to blame it on something else. Yeah. Because God forbid I take accountability if I suck. It's like, nah, the chair. The <laughs> chair's no good. No, How that's... was the weekend? I don't know. The wait staff was pretty loud. <laughs> you know? It's like in the kitchen. It sounds like they're taking the embassy. <laughs> Damn. It's always nice when you do a comedy club. Play along, Sebastian. It's always nice. <laughs> yeah, try to go down memory lane if it's you will. It's always nice when you do a comedy club and there's like an ice machine right off to the side. There's a. Oh, yeah. Oh. oh. Right, right. Yeah. And it's staff. It's not yeah. even someone doing a drink. It's like literally they're just, you know, blending it up, of course. What is, you know, what is with the check spot, too? It's like, um, oh. I, 
I know you you did an interesting method, by the way. That I did? Was, yes, that was like unheard of at the time. Because for, for listeners that don't know, when you're playing clubs, at some point they drop the checks. With like 40 minutes. It's really insane. Yeah, you're up there. I'm like, one time I even yelled down, I'm like, I'm 20 minutes? I'm up here 20 minutes. And especially when you got the kind of clientele that's when not going to run on, out. When Sebastian's on stage, they dropped the valet ticket. <laughs> <laughs> they don't yeah. have a check spot they're like we'll pull your mercedes around uh, yeah i know right it's like i thought uh, that was gonna be funnier sorry no no on. i hear you you know what i mean i, I, was I like, play places where you know with pete has to repeat it he was like in another headspace so he's like hold on wait with valet yeah. what are you yeah, guys stoned <laughs> well yeah no yeah <laughs> no i'm not that was you threw me off there. Oh, check second. spot. But the way I dealt with it, that's what you're saying. Yeah, well, yeah. no, I know what I was saying. Yeah, but I was oh. just commenting to <laughs> that. So as we know, as I said to Regan one time, I go like, I go. Uh, I had heard that Brian Regan, when he plays some places, he uh, there's no check spot, right? So I go, so I go, Regan, is that because like they put the check down? Are they just like laughing at you so hard that they go, <laughs> I'll pay that later? And he goes, no, no, it got to the point where I was like, if you want me to come, you can't throw the checks down until I get off. I can't deal with that anymore, right? I was like, oh, it's interesting. I don't know. Because they go from this to this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they start like, well, you have, yeah. uh, you just, you lose 30% of the room. Or just so what, did he do that? No, Jay, remember, I heard, I remember there was a time where you were having a guy go after you. To Burr was one of them doing it for a little while. I remember I was doing, um, whatchamacallit with them, uh, the, the, the whiskey tour. I remember him talking about that. Like someone would open, then you would headline, and then a guy would come up towards the end during the wrap up part, which I was like, that's an interesting why is the headliner? That that, no, that's that's sort of accurate. All right, thank you for that. Let me look completely. This is CNN. No, this is what you heard. Uh I was having really bad panic attacks. Oh. And I was afraid to be locked into an hour at the end where I'm trapped, I can't leave because I'm the reason everybody's there. Right. So I would host ah. because then I could just keep coming back and forth until I worked through nice. my shit and got nice. over my panic attacks. But that's also interesting because it, it why why should the headliner be the like the, the one that they're oh. supposed to be there for the most is the one whose show is being interrupted yeah, yeah. the most at a club. Who had yeah. the chips? Yeah. <laughs> the chip but it's true. At a comedy club you should have the opener do ten, headliner comes on, and then the middle comes in for the wrap up. Yeah. So the headliner could get his merch set up at the table. <laughs> bro. All right, guys, I hate to say this, but Fall, here it comes, and with that busy fall season just around the corner, you might be looking for wholesale convenient meals for jam-packed days, right? Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, you'll eat well, and you'll stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. It's all about staying healthy. Refresh your healthy habits without missing a beat. Choose from 34 plus weekly flavor packed dietitian approved meals. Ready to eat in two minutes. Two minutes. Factors fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. That's right, you heard me right. Never frozen and ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy. Then get back to crushing your goals, baby. Whatever you got going, you can get back to it. Too busy running around during the day to think about lunch? Keep your energy up with lunch to go. Effortless, wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go. And again, no microwave required. That's huge. With Factor, you can rest assured you're making a sustainable choice. They offset 100% of their delivery missions. They source out 100% renewable electricity for their production sites and offices and feature sustainably sourced seafood in all their meals. So head to factormeals.com slash thecast50 and use the code thecast50 to get 50% off. That's code thecast50 at factormeals.com slash thecast50 to get 50% off. Are you a merch guy? <laughs> no, I can't. I mean, I do. I, I like to do the cast t-shirts by mail. Uh, it got to the point where I was giving Christmas gifts to the post office lady because I was bringing cast T-shirts. You would start seeing them out at the shows a lot. Well, no, but yeah, uh, Pete was doing a full-blown operation at his house where he would uh, s not only pack the shirts but go down to the post office and send. We we had no distribution center. Oh, now Pete, <laughs> they even came with a little note, you know? Yeah, yeah, a little note. You said cast T-shirts. Called the cast. This podcast is called the oh, cast. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yes, that's what it was called. I thought it was called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like, yeah, it's that it's little good. rice paper background. Very classy. <laughs> Matches your shirt, sweetie. I love it. It's so cool. No, I, I, uh, I, I can't fucking do merch like. You know. never had like a, a DVD for sale outside. Oh, no, I never had a DVD. I don't think in my life. Or like, but a, I would do T-shirts from the podcast. I would sell those, and then that lasted about a year. And I realized I was exhausted because I never got to rest. Like in between the first and the second show, you just did an hour. Yeah, yeah. And then some. But I will say this: aside from the exhaustion or whatever, there was something about it that just it wasn't. Mm, don't feel good. Does it? It feels cheap. Cheap. Takes like away I was, from your image. I was just a god, mm-hmm. and now I'm out there like shirts. Yeah, oh, come on, no. get your shirt. No, it's twenty two dollars. Oh. I can't break that. So that's the thing. You and then make everybody, you change. You're making change. No. And everybody no. wants to fucking tell you stories. Like you should do jokes about my brother. He's got a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all talking real close. And the chicks are like, take a picture and like showing their flaps. And you're like, this is not going to age well. <laughs> and you're going, I'm out of smalls. I only got mediums now and XLs. So. Yeah, it's like something. It's like I don't know. I've done it like one and week I've noticed, or two weekends. It's- yeah, it's, I didn't like it. I Gosh. felt shitty, and I felt like. Then I let the end, the middle do it too. Oh, and, they don't want to out selling me. <laughs> oh, that wasn't my case at all. They didn't want to buy it. They just want to buy it from well, me. Well, he's, he's doing his last bit. Is his T-shirt? With the oh, oh, yeah, that you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, you notice they yeah. stay, they stay middles because they become, they <clears throat> yes. become vendors. I see this now That's all the true. time. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. guys are obsessed with selling shirts and their merch, and it's gonna get there. It's like, yeah, but what are you saying on stage? Yeah. And I'm, I had Tim Ferriss on my podcast, and I was telling him how much I hated selling shirts. And he goes, then why do you do it? I go, because they want to, sh- you know, they want to shake your hand and get to know you. That way they come back. And I'll never forget it. He goes, you don't, you don't think your act is enough to make them want to come back? Right. And I was like, mm. he goes, I mean, how bad do you want to be in the t-shirt business? Yeah. I was like, all right. Yeah, yeah. Tim Ferriss, four-day work week. Listen. <laughs> My, on, on the, on the sale, the, you don't sell it. What I used to do is I used to go in, pick a door guy give him a cut of the sales yeah. and he used to do it and then i should stay away and just to talk to the people and I, I believe in them making the connection with the people after the show shaking the hands taking a picture talking to them a little bit they feel like you know you know i always looked at it as like you're gonna come to my house I'm gonna walk you to the door and say goodbye you know i'm not gonna just say hey, thanks for coming and, and that's the way i i i, I uh yeah. I, I approach these shows but i agree i did it once and i'm sitting there breaking hundreds and looking at it. I go, what the fuck am it I doing? It becomes a madhouse. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 oh, embarrassing. It's because, and then people just stand in line to tell you something. God. Yeah. And, and guys, you just see twenty dollars over their yeah. shoulder. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, hoping you're gonna get yeah, and, exactly. and then you sure. should give away because it's too long to wait and you just lost the sale. You should sell shirts with the Chevron logo. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what? Like everybody's got a fucking oh, idea. It's like, can I just sit in the green room <laughs> yeah. and watch talk- bare knuckle boxing right. on the fucking whatever? They never have like cable. They always got some weird satellite shit set up in the back. Oh, like channel 6010 <laughs> is Chinese <laughs> hockey. Right, right. <laughs> no no skate. They always tell me how wild the green room was the week before I was there. You know, yeah. it was like it was like five guys in there. Now it's just me. I like the MC more and more. I always tell my wife when I go home, I talk to the MC more because He's still, or she's still delusioned by like loving, they love comedy. When in the middle is like you said, a t-shirt salesman who's miserable and you know, and then, um, yeah. So th- it is an interesting scene now with the, I had a guy, I had an opening act, a middle act and, uh, mm-hmm. the whole Friday he was just fuck. Like he would just slam the bathroom door in the green room and he's like, <gasps> and I'm like, bro. Like, this ain't gonna fly in this green room, you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, so I go, yeah. what's going on with you? And he goes, my fucking beer cozies didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> beer cozies. <laughs> sold out shows. And this motherfucker's pissed off because he sold beer cozies after a show. The one time, I remember one time I was selling t shirts and they come running over and they go, I was asking 25 and they go, can you just sell them for 20? We have no $5 bills. It's like crazy to try them. I'm like, yeah, go 20. Oh my That's God. That's when you I say 40. <laughs> 40. You know what I did? It was an experiment that I got from Tim Ferriss. And that is you see, like he, he picked the book title four hour work week. And he, but what he did is he sent out one hour, two hour, three hour. Four, he sent mock-ups of every number up to nine and 10. 
and four was the one that people gravitated towards. Wow. So he called it the four hour work week. Uh-huh. And he, that's what he does. Like he'll have a dinner party and he'll charge like I'm making up the numbers like 1500 if you want to come to the doesn't say what it's about or for. And then when those 1500 a ticket dinner party people come, he's like, that's my fucking crowd. So he goes. So I used to sell a shirt that was really expensive. It's just the same as all the other shirts. But I'm like, if you want a meet and greet, buy the hundred dollar shirt. And that right. was the actual highest seller. Right. But then I was locked into this fucking, I'd go on stage and see all these blue fucking t-shirts in the audience. I'm like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. you get the big fat guy with the quadruple XL. You remember fucking making it just for him? I'm like, <laughs> they always want you to sign like an old TV guide and you're not in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, oh, listen. Well, well, Pete, yeah, I, 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 I gotta, I gotta ask a couple of questions out of the book. Uh, so you say in the Indeed. book, yeah, yeah. Monop- nice. you're monopolizing I'm, the energy. I'm sitting over okay. here. I'm low energy right. uh, right. to begin with, all and right. it, it, you're taking up all the airspace. We're just doing the whole thing. No, okay, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Right. I hate when mommy and daddy fight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Pete's got fucking boxer arms. This is a long, like seventy. Look at the vascular like, three inch reach. What yeah. the yeah. fuck? Yeah. Like yeah. That. <laughs> Damn. Honest to God, though, the vascularity. Works construction back in the day. What's that? We were construction back in the day. Cement place, masonry. Yeah. Barrasso and Son masonry. Yeah, three easy, summers. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> um, the book. The book. Okay, we don't got to show up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, shit. By the way, Pete and I lost our biceps. I don't know. Yeah. Look, look. We, our, no. our bicep uh, snapped off. You got. You still got your biceps attached? Yeah, I never had like the bubble. I always had like a long one. Yeah, no, they, I never the, had the, that little the, baseball. No, this is this is a this happened? is for this yeah. <laughs> this is uh, well, like this though. Age, bro. What? Yeah, this age. Yeah, you got... This is this, this is, is a age. pickleball pickle pick, pickleball team photo. <laughs> we usually hold the paddles right here. <laughs> I've, I've oh, never a big bicep God. guy. I never had. I never got that like baseball little bubble up top. It's not. It's not from being in shape. It's from the it's, things hopping. Yeah, Jay. The, 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 the tendon popped off. Elderly thing. The, the tendon popped off. The there's two tendons on the bicep, and the shorter one popped off. That's why there's How? a dim, there's a dim, I, I, I woke up and this is the way it was. I looked in the mirror. I go, did, did, my, did something happen to my bicep? Him too. So we have no biceps. I was making fun of him, and then one day before the cast, I'm looking at my thing, and he's going, I go, bro, look at that dimple. He goes, What's that's this the, fucking growth? That's, that's it. That's Does that hurt? It. No, it doesn't hurt. That's elderly. You pushed away like you were molested. What? That's it. <laughs> I touched your arm, you're like, no. Oh! Touch. Give it a touch. Oh, yeah, no, Invite me to the wedding. I'll let everybody touch it, bro. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You sold, you sold me. <laughs> <laughs> What's the entertainment? Who's the DJ? <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, I'm Better. not doing the whole show. But... I got an Italian in the corner you get to rub his crooked bicep <laughs> it's the lakers not the clippers <laughs> oh my god oh jeez clippers oh. christmas party oh. they used to have a raffle oh, god. instead of like instead uh, of giving everybody a gift yeah they they would have a raffle so one person at the party oh, would walk away god. with like an xbox wow. man yeah they were like low level they had terry cummings for a long time though i remember that yeah. So anyway, we're talking about no, Jay. The book, but, the book. Yeah, get to the book though. Again, with the Saturday Night Live first year, you have your uh, your first. I think it's your first show. You have a sketch that you wrote on this sh- that made the show. Right? Nirvana was the the uh, musical guest. Barkley versus Barney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cold open. So you wrote that with, uh, and then what's his name? Took it. Did he take it? Al Franken over, hijacked Al Franken. the filming of yeah. it. But you know what? See, like, that's a perfect example. If I could do that over again, I wouldn't give a shit that Al Franken showed up and directed what I wrote. Mm-hmm. What I'm happened? Not... Can someone explain so it I wrote, to the listeners? The, Charles Barkley was the host, and everybody was pitching ideas. And I, I said, well, how about, a, you know, it was Bar- remember Barkley versus Godzilla? Yes. Those Nike commercials? Yes, mm-hmm. yes. So I was like, how about Barkley versus Barney the Dinosaur? We'll do a commercial like that. And they were like, yeah, let's do it. I'm like, Eesh. now I got to write it. All right. So right. I'm like, fuck, I don't know. So we did it at Hunter College. I wrote it. There was a stunt man in a Barney suit, and Barkley's like throwing bows. And I had like Barkley like kneeing the fucking dinosaur in the nuts and just fucking just hauling off, <laughs> uppercutting his dick. <laughs> and Al Franken showed up. Obviously, like there's a brand new guy, a 22 year old, like, you're not going to let him direct the show. So they sent Al Franken to oversee it. 
But Al Franken also decided to edit it. Like you can't have Bar, you can't have Barney getting hit in the nuts. Is that right? uh, uh, And so he kind of hijacked it, but it turned out great. Yeah. But uh, so the question was. The question was, you said that each musical guest on the show, you felt like they were singing to you at that particular oh, it was week, insane. right? Yeah. It's like what meth people say. No, 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 I, no. <laughs> it was like how? But, no, no, no. But I know what you're saying. Like it, it would, it would, whatever the musical act yeah. was. I was in a different depression, a different addiction, or a different panic, where there would be a line in the music that I was like. Oh, it's like, it's exactly what I'm going Yeah, through. yeah. So yeah. I was going to ask you, and I didn't take it as that. I didn't take that you were like, I took it as, oh, you're relating to the music in some yeah. way, shape, or form. And I was going to ask you now, where you're at in your life now, is there anything speaking to you musically that's like spoke to you back I'm what, trying to one margarita and I'll put this bro, head. Bro, this question's unbelievable. <laughs> no, no. You're not going to get this on another cast, bro. <laughs> You see, what I'm music is inspiring the, the you now? I mean, come on. To the current time. Can I? Uh, it's like Johnny. Can Carson, I edit that? I mean, uh... Can I edit that question for you? Yeah, yeah. So, what are you listening to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Oh, yeah, man, but... I thought about this in the steam show. I was going, oh yeah. You know, know when that. you were, he just keeps rubbing. Thirty years go by. He just keeps rubbing our noses in it. Steam shower. <laughs> <laughs> What a fucking oh, prick. Man. I thought about this on the, well, fucking, he didn't on tell the you. polo pitch. He was listening to you book it in his, in his uh, uh, cool down ice bath. I don't know if you know that. He's got one of those too. You know, well, it, it wasn't until I was launching my ship. Right. right. You're like the, the oh, villain man. in Columbo. Oh, well, I mean, this is a great point. I'm to... about to start my symphony, Inspector. What you... uh, what, I don't, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm no, not really but... listening. I, I've really not been listening to anything for a while, and that's only because my Bluetooth in my car got fucked up. Because okay. I used to listen all the time, and then my earbuds broke, so I don't listen. If I was going to listen to anything, like if I was going to go to the gym or something, it would be Jane's Addiction Live, like some Jane's Addiction or okay. some Bad Brains or some Wu-Tang. All right, because I, I pegged you listening to the book. I just pegged you as like a musical guy because I'm you, an audiophile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that that's what I was that's what I was getting at with the musical guests correlating to. Yeah, no, I hear you. Like, did you have one now, guest no. on the Saturday Night Live that you felt best best performance you ever saw on the show? Were you like musically? Well, all, well, my two years on the show, I really feel was the best two years of music in the history of the show. Like, really? it was insane. Yeah, that's like it really started good. with Nirvana. Wow. And then it was like Cypress Hill, then Smashing Pumpkins, then the Beastie Boys, then Aerosmith, then Eric Clapton, wow. then James Taylor. Oh it was, my God. It just it was never. Constantly people it, you heard and then of Buddy though, Guy yeah. would actually like sit in with the band band. And I was, I'm such a blues fan and Buddy Guy fan that I was like, what? Have him be the, the guy. Yeah. So uh, Nirvana was just ridiculous because it was uh. first. And it was like my first, like, you're on the show. You want to watch Nirvana rehearse? And I remember watching them rehearse Rape Me, and they have no, there's no, it's it's 11. They don't, they don't know how to do it any other way. It was really fascinating to watch. Like, they have no other button other than, rah, like, they were fucking, I'm getting goosebumps. Like, they went at it, and it's an empty studio, and they're like, Rape Me! But when Aerosmith did Sweet Emotion, like, it, some vibration with the fucking air box on Joe Perry's guitar, like, bro, whoa. I was on the side of the stage and I was like, I like yeah. almost started crying yeah. like a fucking straight bitch. Yeah. I was like, this song means so much to me. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, shit. I was just yeah. fucking, and by the way, I, I, I was my roommate in rehab, Armando. <laughs> if you didn't roll the R's, he corrected you. Cause yeah. it's true. I remember, so you have a roommate there, huh? Yeah, it's like you're in this little shitty twin bed. See, a roommate would right make me is... do drugs. I don't... Oh, was... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, what do you hear? So Armando, if you didn't roll the R's, he corrected you. I remember my first morning I woke up. I'm like, good morning, Armando. He goes, get it. He was a gangbanger. He's like, get it right, vato. Oh. It's Armando. Oh, man. <laughs> and I was like, sorry. Get it right or get <laughs> shot. For... Forgive me, Armando. <laughs> I didn't realize you were an asshole. Uh, <laughs> but he brought Aerosmith's greatest hits with him on a little boom box. Right. And that's all I heard as I was detoxing and kicking drugs was Aerosmith's greatest Jeez. hits. And I'm here to tell you, there's not a lot of them. 
Wow. <laughs> yeah, no. I, yeah, it's the yeah. same. I didn't realize it until I heard it over and over and over all day, every oh, day, right. kicking drugs. It's the same song. It's crazy, cra crying, cry. <laughs> you're my angel, <laughs> crazy, yeah. crying. <laughs> <And I'm> like, <laughs> <laughs> like these fucking guys pulled the wool over our eyes. Right. It's like paint by numbers. And then the songs that don't sound the same, they sound like they should be sung in vaudeville. Right. By like a barbershop quartet. Uh, Ragdoll, daddy's little cutie. Right. Ragdoll, come on up and see me. Did any scabadoba 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 loving an elevator. But okay. whatever band you're coming off of drugs on, it, that stands no chance of being your the favorite bathroom band. Licking, I was in the yeah. bathroom licking Lysol wipes trying to get something. Like, <laughs> I was like, fuck, maybe I can hold my breath till I pass out. Okay, guys, need a new mattress? Eventually we all do, right? So we got great news. We got great news here, Pete and Sebastian, for you. Ghost Bed is having a massive Labor Day sale. Listen, there's nothing funny about missing out on sleep. Sleep is hugely important. It sets the tone for the whole day. And if you're tossing and turning at night, the sleep experts at GhostBed want to help, man. They're there for you. They're a family-owned business who have been making mattresses for over 20 years. You don't last 20 years plus if you don't know what you're doing. And you can feel the quality when you lie down on one of their beautiful beds. These guys aren't cutting corners. Their patented signature materials are designed to support your body and keep you cool, which is so important all night, all night. So you're not waking up in a pool of your own sweat, dying, going, what's going on? That's going to come in handy on these summer nights. I'm telling you, ghost beds will keep you cool. So head to ghostbed.com slash the cast now and check out their sale. Huge sale. Start saving money. You'll be glad you did. For a limited time, you can use code the cast for 40% off your purchase site-wide. Head to ghostbed.com slash the cast to get started. That's ghostbed.com slash the cast. Once again, that's ghostbed.com slash the cast. I, I don't know if we crashed, but does Rolando become like a, a war vet friend? Like someone you went to a war with? Like, will you always be friends? Do you talk on Christmas and shit? Or, Good or, question. Armando. Armando, I'm He sorry. did 11 years in prison for arson manslaughter. He After? No, before. Oh, wow. it, part of his plea deal was, uh, he go he comes out of prison. He'll they'll cut his time if he agrees to go to treatment. Mm. Right. So he's an ar arsonist, manslaughterer, right. and it's like me, a little nightstand, and the bed with Armando. And on the nightstand was a fucking candle and a book of matches. <laughs> 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 like, and then when I found out what he went to prison for, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> just fucking spent 28 days. Sebastian just going, hey, bro, you want to you want to play ping pong? <laughs> so they're like, if Armando doesn't lay Jay's hair on fire with a candle yeah, in 28 you days, you know what? It's progress, not perfection, go. baby. What? Yeah. Uh, there's there's a couple. Well, a lot of guys relapse. You know, you know, guys speakers would come into rehab and they go, you know, there's 20. Only two of you guys are going to be sober in a year. And I remember thinking, fuck this guy. We're the dirty dozen. Like, there was 12 of us that we all graduated. Two of us. Guy nailed it. Me and this guy, Tom, that lives in St. Louis. And it's like oh, everybody nice. else just in and out, in and out. This guy, fentanyl, dead. This guy, back in the game. This guy decided, you know, it, it's yeah. fucking insane. But mm. it's weird because I knew, I remember my first, first or second day I was in, like, where you get food and snacks and shit, and this other kid eli another gang i was pretty much the only white guy me i'm on a weirdo cattle i was the only white guy in there oh and uh it was just beans rice and jesus christ it was an old it was a christian male <laughs> rehab with vatos and me oh, all right man <laughs> and uh Damn, this dude. guy eli i'm getting like snacks or something and he goes what what's your drug of choice i said uh this time adderall and he goes huh and he just looks up at me and goes are you done and i was like yeah yeah, I'm fucking, because I was also 50. This kid was 20 or 19. But like at 50, to be at your own intervention at 50, like that's that's humiliating. Because well, yeah. you're the last one to know your life is a mess. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I thought I was balling. Like, okay, right. my last like big hurrah was at the Tempe Improv. And at my, inter you know Frosty? Of course. By the way, on the way here, Matt Frost said, I love Sebastian and Pete is one of the all-time my all-time favorite comedians, and will never leave that list. That's what he told me oh, on the drive that's here. Nice of him. That's nice of him. And uh, so, Frosty told me at my intervention, he wasn't going to book me anymore. By the way, if you want a comedian to go to treatment, just say you won't book him anymore. 
It's uh, like just packing a bag immediately. Uh, uh, like, what am I gonna get a fucking job? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to do anything. Uh, right. I'm gonna work at Home Depot. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be someone's like, "Hey, were you and Jerry Maguire?" Yeah, yeah Phillips said, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't. Like, oh, wow. so or I could just go to rehab right. and get my shit back together. Yeah, yeah. But then he he told me that in Tempe, the audience filled out those little comment cards with the little golf pencils. And nobody ever fills those fucking things out. But that weekend, oh, they all, there was like a hundred of them. And they all said, like, they, we, we want our money back. We're watching a fallen star. I was missing teeth. I was all sweaty. I was 169. I'm 190 now. Like, I was all fucking smoked up and shitty looking. I was forgetting my jokes. I was drenched. And it was a mess. And he, and he said, he would because of that, he knew, like, right. it's, oh, but the thing is, I thought the weekend went great. Wow. wow. I made 14 grand, which is like not great. That's great. No, no. For where I was okay. previously, it was obvious. It was COVID. Uh -huh. I made 14 grand and I spent two nights with a hooker named Meow Meow. Wow. So wow. I thought it went fantastic. Oh, wow. wow. Like, yeah, I was late to the show, but come on. Right. And so I couldn't tell fantasy from reality. Like wow. if, if you gave me a lie detector test and said how did Tempe go, I would have went. I'm I'm on it. I can, I'm I, at the top wow. of my game, bro. So when you're not fooling around with meow me, me, meow meow, I don't know if that's your real name, Pete. Oh. This is what? What the fuck is this? This is what they gave me. I know, but the thing. But, but I don't want to <laughs> lean forward. If I lean forward, then I feel like I'm blocking your angle on no, Jay. Think, so I'm trying think, to be. Think, he's right, trying think, to be. Look, look no, you know what I'm doing. that lifting his up. You'll never find so. Like I we, don't know if Meow Meow is her real I've name. Never been it might have been like I've Donna ne Meow. Or... I've, I've never been with a hooker, right? Ooh, so, like, geez. my question is, when you're not doing what, you know, traditionally you do with a hooker, when that's over. Let's assume that maybe the hooker part was for comedy. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> you are so funny, bro. All oh. right. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> well, you got hooker questions? <laughs> but that's crazy. That Ask these... Fizz. What? <laughs> <laughs> I could remember Patrick's name. <laughs> the oh, mice in the yeah. workshop over here. Man, and you thought it was going great. That's yeah. what's scary. That's the scary part. I was, I was truly like, what the fuck is he talking about? That weekend went fantastic. Well, we, you started taking this um, Kalalip, was it? Uh, Kalanapin. Yeah, it, when you were on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. And, and I didn't get too far after that. I didn't. Steam shower got cold? Or? Steam steam went dead, and uh, I had to get out. 20 minutes uh, steam shower. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get a waterproof Bluetooth in his place. So was, forward. Was, it, was, it, was that what started the, No, no, the no. Use? That's actually the only drug I never abused. Oh, okay. And the only one I didn't manipulate doctors to write me prescriptions for and this. And um, that was when I had, like, the, the big panic attack, and I ran home from 30 Rock to St. Mark's Place. Uh, like, I was, I was like... It's just, it's, I can't even, your insides have to be on your outsides. It's just, everything's disorienting. It's, and it's from the show. The, no, the, no, no, no. It's just the, panic disorder. Some people have asthma. Some people get panic attacks. It's just a neurological glitch. There's no like, but why, but this, if you had bronchitis, you wouldn't go, but why am I coughing? Like, who gives a fuck? Take your medicine, yeah, get better. Got it. So Klonopin was prescribed to me by a psychopharmacologist, a half milligram a day or twice a day. And it just. It just keeps those uh, those hatches on the submarine where you think water's rushing in. Yeah. It just keeps those closed. And then it actually works prophylactically where it stays in your system. That's why you take it every day, not as needed. And because then like when you get anxious, you can you like, oh no, I'm on I'm on this thing. Mm -hmm. So this is actually something else. I have a stuffy nose, I'm not breathing right through my nose, or I'm anxious because of this or whatever. So I would. I took Klonopin, and the, the, when I stopped taking Klonopin was when I went to rehab. They took it away because you obviously can't take a controlled substance in rehab. And I was, I was, in, I was irate. Like they're taking you. I can't take Klonopin. I've taken it my whole life. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Turns out I'm an alcoholic, and what I've done that way has cured everything else. I was diagnosed. I was diagnosed bipolar a bunch of years ago, and I was on medication for that. Manic depressive. I was on medication for that. And then once I did what I needed to do in sobriety, I've been off those meds. Wow. It's, it's Good like, for you. It turns oh, yeah, out I'm just awesome. a fucking drunk. Wow. Damn, bro. But, you know, Damn. I always thought I was this high bottom drunk. Like I had, you know, I was doing talking dog movies. I don't want to, you know. <laughs> Listen, though, 
And, you know, I had a car, I had a great, great girlfriend and, and all that. And I was like, I'm a pretty, in rehab, I'm like, these guys are like wiping their ass with their socks in the Burger King bathroom. Like, I'm different. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and I thought I was like this high bottom addict. And then I remember standing in line for meds at 50, like actually like a long line of guys just taking the cup, just like uh, Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah. And I, was like, and I was like, what's this? This is my Klonip. And they're like, no, you're off of that. You can't have that in here. This is something else. And I had a tantrum and I went back to my room and I was laying on my bed and I had a shaved head at the time and I was all like sunken in and they give you these big water bottles in treatment, like reusable ones. And it says the name of the place. So like when you go on an outing, if somebody wanders, you can spot them with the fucking water bottle. Oh, and I was laying in my bed. I was, I was screaming, crying. I was so mad. I, my Klonopin was gone. And I'm laying on my bed and I'm sucking on the water bottle. And I saw my reflection in the closet mirror. And I looked exactly like a fucking baby wow. in a crib sucking on it. I'm like, wah, wah. and I saw my reflection. I'm like, this is not a high bottom. <laughs> like, that's you. All the movies, all the TV, all the friends, all the, and that's exactly who you are right now. Like, that's who the fuck you are, buddy. Oh, boy. You're and lucky I, Armando wasn't trying to sleep at that Armando. moment. Armando! <laughs> yeah, he's a man hearing that. Man, that's nuts. And and let's not forget, because you're making fun of, like, you're like, oh, TV talking dog. You Not only have you done Saturday Night Live and the movies, then you had a run. Do you remember the sitcom Gary Unmarried? I was yeah. fun. That I was, like, at one. least three or four seasons, right? Three seasons. Which is a hit in, in, in the sitcom right. world to get some on. We were, on, we were on after Criminal Mind, so I don't know who the mastermind like a... at CBS was. Like, you know what would be good after serial killers? Half-hour comedy. <laughs> oh, yeah. But that seemed like you seemed happy doing that from a distance, at least. Uh, I was really happy. My personal life was getting a little, you know, I'm divorced twice, so. Oh, twice. Oh. Yeah, it, was, it started, oh, hey. to, started to get the friction on that. Yeah. Just, you know, you ever been divorced? No. No. You ever, no. Uh, don't you dare. Uh, you specifically <laughs> dude what the fuck i can <laughs> you, don't have a, you don't have a steam shower oh, what? yeah what are you gonna lose an egg sandwich <laughs> <laughs> i wish not where i live you can't even get that oh yeah. i lose uh half of a uh, house from 1885 <laughs> with radon in the basement you come live with me pd i'll sure. say i got a little guest room in the I, apartment well can we get by right the way, across my son's bunk beds when is the wedding dude? don't know yet we had to get through the prenup which was pretty big because i don't want her stealing my jokes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't have That is beautiful. <laughs> I can't have Jeannie doing Christopher Walken impressions. <laughs> Jay Moore, if anyone doesn't know, is is engaged to the uh I guess the owner of LA Lake is at this point, Jeannie yeah. Bus, right? The legendary yeah. Jeannie Bus now like that. How'd you guys connect? So, does she just write to the prenup? You know, nothing. Like, you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> like they like prison. They take a photo of what you come through the door with, and, 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 and they give all the back of a basket. I get a plastic out. bag on my way out. <laughs> I come, I come out of the fucking marriage. You just see a see-through bag with this in it, and forty-four cents. <laughs> And where's my toothpick? <laughs> but all the stories and memories, bro, and the photos and the photos, yeah. The uh, dude, if there's a wedding. We should be invited. We're having a great time right now. You know that, bro. I'm I not do even know that. kidding. Yes. The problem with a wedding that we're dealing with is like, where do the invites stop? Yeah. After us. <laughs> I just made it. If you don't, you'll be my Hello. plus one. <laughs> I, I tell you something. If you guys are invited, if yeah. All right. that's exactly how it's gonna go down. What? Uh, yes, well, Keith a couple. plus one. And I will. I will talk to LeBron before my fourth beer. Good luck. All right. Well, well, yeah. Well, good luck for him. Good All luck. Right. Yeah. Go. <laughs> It's uh like what the 2002 Lakers like where do you stop the invites? 
You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, you well, got all these players, oh, all these coaches, all these. But your fiance does not have a relationship with a player from 2000 that you have with me and him as comics. This is a strong. We, we just met. Thing. I, I'm Bro, not, I'm trying to get you. Uh, in. Well, You're I'm, in. I'm already in. I'm already in. As long as you can, you bring me. I bet Jackie's going to want to go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't change the rules. Don't change the rules. I'll talk to her when I see her. I'll talk to her. All right. She ain't coming. Oh, man. <laughs> did why, you, why ruin did it with you, a wife? What are you listening to? <laughs> I still listen to Billy Joel, you know? <laughs> well, what do you mean? Well, no, I was just doing oh, callback. Oh, because thing, the callback. Oh. He did his... He's like, no, Billy Joel, little Rod Stewart. No, it's from the thing we were talking about. About the, you with the music. Yeah, how, yeah. I, how I did the book. You know, that. the Rod Stewart I like is... I love Rod Stewart. I love the Rod Stewart, like... Faces, Mid eighties, like infatuation. No. no, before that, when he was with Faces, well, Faces, the women Ronnie I Wood. know, I wouldn't let wash my, you know, whenever. Oh, they would yeah, give me the Ron time. Wood. Yes, Ron Wood, Ronnie Lane. Don't fuck. Yeah. Come on, baby. No, no, I know you know. Dear know. old granddad, I laughed at all his words. Holy shit! You Come know? on, baby. Yeah, that's a good one. Ronnie Wood solo stuff is always good too, from the Stones. So yeah, what's well, yeah. up? Wait, no, but I want to get back to the to the. I have to ask this, and even if it's hacking and it's been asked, it's just a fact, and it's a fact. Okay, you're a big sports fan. <clears throat> Let's take me for example, big Yankee fan. If 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 I was dating or married to a woman who was like in charge of the roster. Yeah. And like, there's a picture or something that I'm not liking what he's doing. You don't think over breakfast I'm gonna lean over to my wife and go, "What are we still doing with uh, so and so on the rotation?" I, and then do a walkout, right? Like, like you're not gonna lean over and go, "How many three pointers does so and so have to miss before we get him out of the roster?" I'm gonna go take a swim. See you later. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I'm not. And you can't tell me she's not gonna listen to you. She loves you. Right? Whoa! <laughs> right. I'm staying pro. In a way, you like coaching the Lakers, bro. This <laughs> ball blow it up, boom. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Finally, somebody uh, says it. That's it. That's what he said. <laughs> uh, she's not in charge of the roster. <laughs> right. I mean, I guess in a way, being the owner and the governor of the team, whatever, but right. she's also great at delegating responsibility. Rob Palinka and Rob We Trust. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. I know. So uh, I would tell him <laughs> over breakfast. <instead. laughs> but yeah, it speaks volumes to your I wouldn't, I, you know, I wouldn't. I'd tell him over breakfast. Though. There you go. It's a, it's a, <laughs> it's not a way to harmony to, to get in that business. No, I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. To get into her business. Of course not. If she's leaning across the table like, how many times are you going to try this joke before? <laughs> Why don't you sell merch? I know. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're like, sweetheart, I know. I know. you're this close. <laughs> and and I wanted to say that hacky question before. Why is that a hacky question? Because get out of your head. people are going to ask it from now on. But I You know, we call this in the first. program piece, we call this bondage of self. Oh, that's Colin <laughs> Quinn, man. All right. We're going to Yeah. Bro, what about a one-man show like an Eric Bogosian, John Leguizamo? Leguizamo, <laughs> wow. <laughs> about recovery? Pull that one out. Leguizamo. Leguizamo. The Italian version. Leguiz. Did you talk to Leguizamo? <laughs> no, I don't know. About what, like rehab and stuff? No, no, yeah, exactly. All of it. The, the, I mean, so many rises and falls and rises. Well, that's like, what I'm working on. That's the goal for me is to do an hour special about, you know, being at my own intervention, which is, I don't know if you've, an intervention is the worst surprise party you'll ever be to. Mm. <laughs> but I, I think, you walk in, everybody you love is there. You're like, hey, oh, no. I don't think the stand up is giving, an, like, first of all, you're an incredible actor. Incredible. Truly, I feel that way. I mean, some of the, like, he did a TV show called Action where he played Peter Dragon. Yeah. And I'll never forget, you go to park your car. And there was some guy who got employee of the month and he was parked where you normally park. And he goes, I'm employee of the month. They let me park there. And you go, I made this place $2 billion over the last five years. You may be employer of the month. I'm employee of the century. fucking century. <laughs> they get your fuck. And it was so great. My point is. You remember how that guy got back at me? No, what? I think. What? In the show, he jacked off in my Cobb salad. Oh, my God. That's, <laughs> that's why it only lasted a season. It was yeah. rough around the edges. <laughs> Buddy Hackett was in, the, in it with him, too. The legendary Buddy Hackett. When we, when we were getting canceled, I walked into Doug, uh, Doug's office. Why am I blanking on his last name? He's from the Essex fucking. Essex or something like that? No, he's something. from the neighborhood. Doug, uh, 
fucking, but I go, hey, you can't cancel us. You got to move us to another night. He goes, I got, I got nowhere to put you. I go, put us on after that 70s show. He goes, can't do it. That's a family show. I go, bro, every time I watch it, they're eating hash brownies. He goes, together. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this fucking guy said to me. How do you argue with fucking yeah. network yeah. logic? Yeah. yeah, together. <laughs> they're eating it together. Just. But if you combine your acting skills along with the comedic way you, you, you know, do stand-up, and, and by the way, there's less pressure in a one-man show. You don't have to, like, necessarily hit the punchline like right. yeah, it's a one-man show it's not necessarily supposed to be funny unless it is funny then you're like yeah i wrote it to be funny right 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 you know, <laughs> but if it don't work out that way just sit on a stoop in your fucking hoodie you know right like it all in introspective yes you know first i had like i don't know did you ever see um 700 sundays with billy crystal no i heard it was amazing i never saw it no i didn't see it he doesn't really miss no no nah. what did billy you see crystal it doesn't miss no i didn't see it but he doesn't he doesn't do anything that isn't great, does he? Yeah, well, He's I mean... He's the Billy Joel of comedy. That's a stretch, bro. Oh, sorry. <laughs> right. I mean, don't you think? I mean, he's done... Billy Crystal's still done some stuff lately that no one sees, you know what I mean? I almost... I almost... I almost <laughs> what? what? I guess we're not getting he doesn't it. give a fuck! What? Oh, I, got, I almost know. made a Billy Joel joke, but I didn't want him to kick me out of the studio. <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying. No, he doesn't have that power. Yeah. Uptown yeah. girl. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah. The, uh, yeah, I would like to do an hour special just about recovery. I'm at about, I'm about, I'm about 30 minutes now, and I just got to, I write on stage. Like, I'll tag something, and I'll be like, and that'll, I'm like, oh, like, they gave me Seroquel. That drug that makes you fucking pass out, like I'll, then that'll add an ad. So hopefully I can get to fucking have 50, you'll be fine. Because yeah. with the applause, gentlemen. Well, yeah, yeah. that's another 10 minutes. I mean, Jesus yeah. Christ. Uh, um, so, so, like, Lindsay, could we get our um, yeah. a little, you know, we, we, um, we just started having guests on, and I do appreciate you coming on. I know you're busy. It's a long, you gotta, gotta, I gotta fight somebody? No, well, <laughs> we, we, bring in, we bring in a brawler. I know you. You said in the book that you you um you fought Chris Farley or you wrestled him. No, we had a wrestling yeah. match or three. Is he that powerful, this man? He's the strongest man I've ever known in my life. Yeah, because he's saying he uh, he wrestled Farley, and uh, and also you, you you piled on top of him at the end of a scene <laughs> uh, where he played like an inmate. Yeah, the right? motivational speaker sketch in a yeah. van down by the river. It was yeah, a cold yeah. open, and then Martin Lawrence was hosting, and it's like scared straight. Like, he's one of the inmates. He comes out, and him and Martin keep selling us for a cigarette back and forth. And then at the end, he runs at, like, the warden, and he goes through the wall. And we're like, whoa. And so we all go out of the prison and escape through the hole in the wall. Right. But somebody, I don't know who had the idea, but they go, hey, let's all jump on top of Farley when, when he falls through the wall and we leave. Let's all jump on top of him. Then he won't be able to come back in and say, live from New York. It's Saturday night. So we're like, yeah, yeah. So it's me, Sandler, Spade. Schneider, I know it's a little <laughs> tiny in there, but uh, <laughs> Timmy Meadows. Uh, so there's five of us. Right. So he goes through, and then we all come running through, and we dive on top of him, and he and we're giggling like fuck, like if you're fucking with your uncle, like yeah, ha -ha! Uh, yeah, yeah. He pulled us up like a bag of leaves in the front yard, just <laughs> and in the exact same amount of time, yeah. live from New York, <laughs> and, like oh, like this, nothing, just oh. fucking grown ass man on top yeah. of him, he just goes. Damn. Yeah, man. I had to go and watch the clip. If you haven't seen the clip, oh, go check it man. out because Did you see his sweat? Well, see, this is what I wanted to ask you. I saw the sweat at the end of the scene. In the beginning of the scene, it looked like they edited Yeah, that's an edit. When it was they that's an edit between Yeah, when it when it happened live, it was sweat the whole time. He would always do something between dress rehearsal and air that the moment you saw him, you just start cracking up and you're fucked. Yeah. So he was always coming out in these prison blues. And then for the rehearsal, we you know you rehearse it like eleven times or whatever. And then when he came out live, he was absolutely drenched <laughs> in these giant. He just comes out fucking drenched in these giant. And you're just at the moment he comes in, you're like, damn. Yeah. And he knew when he was. He knew when it was just you on camera. Like he knew technically what was happening. So if it was just you over his shoulder, he'd go, "How about you, young fella?" <laughs> <laughs> And you're just fucking, it's insane. Man. It's like an acid trip. Yeah. And he'd must your hair and try to make your wig crooked. Yeah, you, you were saying that he, he's the funniest guy you've ever been around most by far? Funniest, strongest, and most beautiful man I've ever known in my life. Wow. And he you've was, known Tom Cruise. <laughs> 
what I'm saying. <laughs> Everything, bro. You ain't lying. I know. Well, listen, as, as a thank you, we Sebastian, won't. Sebastian, maybe get a studio with air conditioning. No, no, no. <laughs> next it's, job. It's, 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 it, all, all the, it's, it's going to the refrigeration of, of, oh, our, uh, of our, our little parting. Little fucking prosciutto. Little prosciutto. Yeah, we don't have to open this now. You could have it on the way, uh, way home. Yeah, uh, this favor and... will be repaid in kind. <laughs> Thank uh, you. <laughs> listen, Sebastian. You and Jeannie can eat that while you discuss who you're going to cut. <laughs> <laughs> Discussing what? Who you're gonna cut? <laughs> From the you're invited. I'm, there's no way you ain't. No, coming. not the way. I'm talking about the Rasta. Yeah, I already know I made the wedding guy. <laughs> See, Pete always had this cockiness, this confidence. See, now you're just now you're on my side yeah. of the fence. Oh, I know I'm coming. <laughs> I know. Right? You said I, you can't take it away. We got it on tape now. Oh, I can take it. <laughs> right. Right. The fuck do I care? Uh, that now one I guy what, from Long Island, man. Yeah, now I know why you and all Mondo never came. Kept in touch, bro. He'll be, he'll be on play in Dubai that day anyway. <laughs> <laughs> buying. Yeah, buying yeah, Dubai. Uh, buying a house in Dubai on, on the fake lake. Oh. Have you ever played? Uh, have you ever been to Dubai, <laughs> by the way? <laughs> no, and no. I would. And I got no problem with like people like, hey, how are you going to take Saudi money? Right. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Watch me. Right, right. They abuse women. Me, dude, dude. Hey, you know what? Yeah. Somebody, you know, I. I, listen, <laughs> a lady handed me my money. I Somebody don't know. else is gonna take the money, right? You should take it. Yeah, and do like some... I'll fucking play North Korea. I don't give a shit. Dude, if there's I no would photos, love to go to I'd North Korea. I wear a thing if there's no photos. You know, with the thing that hangs down. What? A uh, do rag? No, it's like a taran. What do you call it? A the... taran. You got taran. it. Taran. No, taran. you got it. No, no, it's not. It's not a taran. Le Guziam. You know. <laughs> Enjoy the cheese, though. You got great teeth. Thanks. You were. You always took care of the lighting. Um. No, actually, I just straight. You must be famous. That wasn't that funny. <laughs> you guys laughed like fucking psycho fonts. Here, it was delighting. They're like, ah! 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 Do you hear what Sebastian said? <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. Wow. Uh, well, uh, have you, did you always like floss and take care of you? Because, like, I don't know. Oh, wow. Oh, oh bro. Oh, bro. oh we just God damn it. Je Jesus. You want to edit that? that? Let me see here. What was that? It was my left leg. It was my fucking tooth. <laughs> I take that out, eh, pussy, like a woodchuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, when, when in the rela when in the relationship do you do you take that out and go, hey, listen, my my who do you think paid for my dentist? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't earning in rehab. <laughs> now, was that what was missing in um that teeth? Gig, in that, in that gig, uh, where were you? Did you say that they wrote the letters? Can't be. No, I just yeah. my teeth were all like, they were just. Getting they, rotted out. Oh, like but they I was, were still there. That's you know, I got, I, right. I'm on my way to ten implants. These are all yeah. screwed in. These are all screwed in. These got to get done. And that's that. That actually came out when I was chewing gum on a Zoom meeting. I was just sitting there like, uh huh, clink clink. Oh man. Wow. No, no blood, no pain. My tooth just said just, enough. <laughs> did you stay on the Zoom? I did. Oh, that's a trooper, bro. You chop and a, a tooth and you keep the conversation I a, going. I had a show in an hour. I was in Vancouver. I had a show in an hour. So you do what we do. I just walked up and said, look at my fucking tooth. It just fell out. Oh, I think I wouldn't do I think I would hope they didn't see. It would be a terrible show. I'd be so in my head. It's like when you think you got like snot or something, but you can't wipe your nose. Oh, you love Adderall. Your boogers are orange or blue. What when you so it's like you went so, down on rainbow. What, how do you open up a show? You tell the crowd, "Look, I just lost a tooth." I just because I just lost a fucking tooth just sitting around. Cancel the show. Bro. <laughs> I had just gotten out of rehab. I wasn't really in a position. Oh yeah, yeah. The fucking strong arm. I love the honesty. Though. All forty people in the audience on a Friday. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You want to know how it's going out there, Pete? If you guys talk amongst yourselves, I'll show you a picture. And Sebastian, I'm going to show you this so you can thank your fucking lucky stars that you're not me. Oh. <laughs> I thought you guys would literally maybe. Okay. Let me see if I can get that going. That's the first show Friday total in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Wow. Well, let me total. See. Let me tell you something, bro. They total. <laughs> That's the entire audience. I said this. I said, hey, if you two guys sit over here, I won't have to turn my head. <laughs> right. Yeah. Was this Friday night show? Yeah. Yeah, that's a tough time, Friday night. Not What's really. Yeah. <laughs> Not really. People are tired. They worked all day. They worked all day. Grand Rapids. I know. Yeah. Won't be back. <laughs> <laughs> they saw an amazing show. Seriously, though. Jay, and you know, we never, we're literally laughing hard right now. This guy is you so see funny. You the show now, you'll... Because it always has been. You've always been hilarious. I know, man. but nobody's talking about fucking detoxing and... 
No, that's true. Then, no. Armando. Yeah, yeah, this is this is good stuff. Yeah. Fucking meds and right. your intervention and going to meetings and all that shit. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, man, three meetings a day in the beginning. I'm like, man. But the third meeting, I'm like, fuck this. I got to get out of here. These people are losers. And then the lady behind me goes, I'm Michelle. I'm a sex addict. I'm like, what's that now? <laughs> <laughs> This is a good meeting. <laughs> Keep coming back. Right. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Man. Where else do you go to meetings, Michelle? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad to see We're the other maniacs. Feeling good now, man. I feel great. Nice. This is the best. I get to see my old friends and yeah. new old friends. New old there you friends. go, man. Here you go. Well, you do appreciate. Do you have a barber shop in here? Uh, we could, we could, we could get that ready in about five minutes, right? Yeah. No. We, we, we you want a haircut? A barber? To... No, I'm just. No, curious. you want a haircut? No. Okay. Uh, cancel it. Um, <laughs> no, we don't have a barber shop in here. Bowling I've out? always no. had one last no, no. question. I've always wanted to ask, and and and, and you know, as he's seven, just up, under eight inches. Uh, how's it, <laughs> As he's building up, and it his bothers me. Career. When you're watching TV, all right, you've been in so many films that when you're like we all inevitably all watching TV, flipping through on a Sunday or whatever. When you come across one, Stephen, for Genie too, guy. When you come across one that you're in, do you watch it? Do you go, oh shit, I haven't seen this, in, or do you never? Yeah, it depends. I will watch it if it's like a part I want to watch. Like yeah. if it's yes, I will. Of course, you will. I, will. You will. I mean that's. Is it you that had the joke like when you're looking at a photo album, you only give a shit about the pictures you're in? I just say that, yeah. You yeah. do, but you pretend that's, to care about the other ones, but you really yeah, don't. Yeah, that's it. Know. Like uh, yeah. when I go to a movie and I'm like, I'm not even in this part. Yeah. yeah. I'm, when they and show then I come me on screen, I'm, I'm like, like now we got a movie. <laughs> <laughs> ah, isn't that the best part? <laughs> that's it, man. Like I'm not in the movie for like 30 minutes. It stinks. I hear you. You, you were crushing it in movies. You should, hopefully, are you auditioning? Are you going to go back into all I that? Just, I was just an air. And what? The movie Air. You were? Yeah, I was the head what? of Adidas. What? I was, I was 240 pounds, Pete. For the... I'm, I'm down 50. So that dude, that was with ben, uh, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, I, right? I know who was in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're sitting here going, oh, look at how few people were here at the day. You were in a movie with those two. You're, you're doing it. You're back at it, bro. Buddy, I've, I'm not, I have no complaints. All right. Well, I love my life. All right. All right. Yeah. If I do nothing else the rest of my life, it's the best. All right, all right, because that's I amazing. The, the that, I, I haven't seen just... the flick yet, but I, I'm glad to hear you back acting and crushing it, man. Yeah, I'm in Winning Time next year. That had nothing to do with Genie. It was a separate thing. Just when's that coming out? Uh, late August. Late Winning August. Time. Okay, yeah. The second season. I played Kareem's agent. Oh, you do? Really? Yeah. Oh, good. I'm looking forward to that. that I really guy love that. Was so good. Solomon Hughes, the guy that plays Kareem. He's yeah. 6'10". Yeah. They put the Herman Munster boots on him too. Oh, really? And at one point he goes. You're gonna fucking tell me. And I forgot my lines. I was so intimidated. Wow. <laughs> it's a seven foot two guy going, yeah. you motherfucker. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, he, he's si turn? he's six ten, but with the, the boots, he's seven two. Yeah, they give him yeah. the, they give now, him the Herman like, Monsters. Now, does Kareem get to know, is, like, Kareem cool with everything that was said? Does he know? No, I, the Lakers aren't really happy about the show because they weren't asked to, like, kind of steer at the NBA. And so I yeah. asked Jeannie how she felt about me doing it because I'm not an idiot. Right. And she's like, You're an actor, you gotta act. I would never Boom. act as I bro. She's the best. That's awesome, dude. She's the fucking best. I can't I wait bring to meet her at the garbage wedding. cans in. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait either. <laughs> I just Oh shit. Why'd you put it down? What? <laughs> <laughs> You're on a roll. <clears throat> I thought you had to, you know You're like, funnier when you hold it up. Uh, I usually hold on to it, yeah. I like to hold on to it, man. Make me I'm funny. I like to think I'm funny whether it's there or here. <laughs> nah. <laughs> so You man, know, when we did when we did Burt Wonderstone, uh Jim Carrey, this one scene in the bar did like when I tell you he did a hundred takes, he did one hundred takes. Jim Carrey did. We were there for like an hour and a half to change mags twice. And it was just like three sentences. And then he has to fake levitate out behind the bar. And it's me, Steve Carell, Alan Arkin, and uh, and this, this German comic and Jim Carrey. After an hour and a half, he goes, I think we got it. And then Alan Arkin goes, I like two. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, two? He goes, yeah, that was the one, man. <laughs> that was the one. <laughs> two. Check hey, it. Before we go, can you tell Sebastian the story about Buddy Hackett and, and the old story about how focused someone is on stage? Remember? What's you your monitor on stage, Sebastian? Yeah. Oh, I, 
You told me I had a dyno once. So it's like, oh, what do you mean? He oh, goes, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. your oh. monitor is everything in your head that isn't what you're saying. You're like, oh, my God, that guy's not laughing. I wonder what he paid for parking. Look at her tits. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit. And I said, ah, it's probably about, this is like, I don't know, 20 years ago. I go, it's probably about 50 50. He goes, not bad. I go, what's your monitor? He goes, one. I was like, why not 100? He goes, I got to know where the fire exits are. <laughs> oh, but man. after that, I give him 100% of 99 the whole way. Oh, man. <laughs> What's he like? I never He's loved like Buddy Hackett. To... I, if, if I knew him in a comedy club, if I worked back then, I'd be like, the fuck is this guy doing? <laughs> I'm like, I wouldn't even hang out with the fucking guy. I'm yeah, sorry, I'm not into any he's, of it. He's the party. He's slow, bro. He was. I always thought he was slow. Him and Jonathan Winters, like not. I never got into Jonathan Winters. I never. I never. They're like, he's an improvisational Steve genius. Steve Vaughn, neither. I'm like, with the arrow, what the fuck is going on? People were on Quaaludes, Pete. I know, right? People are on Quaaludes, and a guy comes out. <laughs> the front, they're like, what? I mean, did Buddy Hackett have good Sinatra stories at least? Oh, he had great stories. So he was the best. Buddy was the fucking best. Yeah. Like he was. I saw him at Avery Fisher Hall, and he comes out. He goes, "A black guy in the front row? How?" <laughs> and then he goes, "I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean that. What's your name?" He goes, and the guy goes, "I'm African American." He goes, "Oh, F, okay, but can I tell you something, Buddy? You look black." Uh huh. Why? Right. I- Bro, we can't laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, do you, I know you're in rehab, but do they have TV there? No. We can't Why, laugh what at happened? That. What did I miss? What happened? We're going through a war phase, missed? bro. What? Uh, they have to No, then that. I start grabbing her ass, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, you grab my ass and fucking have a, you know, it's, you slide. It's funny, right? Everybody even even as you were doing, I know you're like me. Like, I'm not going to laugh at this. <laughs> and he's going to be so disappointed. <laughs> First of all, don't get woke, you fucking pansy. I'm not getting woke, but you know. Is pansy okay? Are we, are we still on the air? Uh, there's nothing racist about that joke. Right. Now, we'll, now we'll shine in a spotlight on I'm it, African bro. American. Really? You look black. Come yeah. On. I know, but we just. We yeah. can't end on that. <laughs> no, 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 man. Whenever I don't feel so good, I remind myself of the Siamese twin whose brother is gay, whose boyfriend is coming over and they share an asshole. <laughs> That's what he told me. Oh man! Then he told me there's a 35 in the nightstand. There's one in the chamber. Be careful. He lent me a gun. I uh... who are we talking about, bro? <laughs> I, don't know. I think I was doing Harvey Keitel just then. <laughs> what? I'm still doing Buddy Hackett. Oh, I'm like, bro. I'm not. I'm like so it's hot in here, right? Yeah, but like yeah, the commitment. You're just going. You're unbelievable, dude. Why don't you just listen? You know? well, what should I do? You should do the one man show, like I said, and not do stand up for it. What? Why would I not do? Why are you trying to get me out of stand up? Like you're gonna uh, move up a rung. What? <laughs> In Pete's mind, it's like if I could just get him. I know. I, it's not the master is trying to get the Friday night in Grand Rapids. You're killing me with that. But but you wouldn't look at it as playing Friday night Grand Rapids and no one's here. You'd be like, I'm rehearsing my one man show in Grand Rapids this weekend. It sounds so much more romantic, guy. <laughs> yeah, nobody's gonna believe I took a connecting flight to rehearse. <laughs> right. No, so one man show. One man show. About the stand up and, and the acting, it's like you've always. I remember even back in the day when you you were you were always frustrated when people knew you for your acting movies and not your stand up as much. When it was like it was almost like a curse to be doing stand up, and then maybe you'd have more of appreciation for how much people were loving your acting because you're acting. You you would do you acted with everybody from freaking Pacino not, right. to Cruz. Wow. Well, Did you uh, act with Brad Pitt, by the way? I I have. But, but I got cut out of the movie. It was that movie where he's in space. I was the comedian, like, on Mars. Oh, they wait, just did me. Pluto Nash? He did Pluto Nash. Did oh, Mars. Murphy, oh, wow. Shit, I forgot about that. I don't know if that's a celebration, Pluto Nash. I think I'd rather do a talking dog movie. <laughs> <laughs> but again, you worked with Eddie Murphy, and that set great. must have been amazing. I'm sorry. I know we're trying to rap here, but I'm just saying. Oh, I didn't yeah. realize we are trying to rap. I oh. just thought it was halftime with snacks. <laughs> <laughs> no. I love snacks. The meat is spoiling. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's for the In this heat. <laughs> yeah, that's for the... <laughs> What'd you ask me? <laughs> Open the door. You cracked the door open. There's a dying in here. Uh, that's... <laughs> what'd you, what'd you ask me? <laughs> what? <You don't... laughs> I asked you about we're acting with Brad Pitt. Yeah. yeah, but you it was another question that you asked me, and you jumped on your own thing. It doesn't matter. Who gives? <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, I know. I bowl that's for home, bro. Oh, okay. You've been great, Jay. Thanks, thank you. For thanks. Let's do it again. Yeah. And you guys yeah. are never even in the same room yeah. usually, right? Never. No, never. So this is the second guest we've ever had face had. to face. Yeah. Did you pass at the store? 
Did I pass at the store? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>